Father, we thank you for this, uh, this opportunity and this, uh, this glorious day, beautiful day, on the warm side. But we thank you, God, that uh, you are constantly providing. We thank you that you are constantly on the throne, Lord, and you're always reminding us who's our sovereign God. Father, today as we unfold and unravel, Lord, what our position is, um, what our stance is, what our function is, or what our, uh, our purpose is here, Lord, we just uh, pray that uh, you unfold, uh, open, Lord, and reveal to us um, the doctrine of man, Lord, is, uh, to understand our uh, role when it comes to you, Lord, knowing that you are creator and we are creature. You are God and we are not. So, Father, help us right now to understand what you want us to understand so we can walk out of here, Lord, with reverence in our hearts, Lord, for our God, our Lord God, reigns above us, Father. We just pray, Lord, that this is uh, edifying to you and pray that the words being spoke, Lord, are uh, of spirit and truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Unfortunately, we do not have doctrine and man for those who are watching today. Uh, part one because it did not record and so I'm just going to move on and try to do a quick uh, rundown of where we are so we last time we were together we were talking about creation to man and this is part one of what we we're doing and uh, we want to understand our position okay the reason why Veritas does this the reason why we do doctrine is what is our role what is our role as uh, as cross Christ followers as created beings it's disciples, but it, it, we understand the very simplistic reasoning behind it is this, that what I said in the prayer, that he is, we're not. And there's a lot of, a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to that these days, the big G, little G, we're, you know, big G gods, and there's big G God and us little G gods. I, uh, miss me with that. I understand that that is, um, that's the same, the same uh, uh, temptation that the serpent gave Eve in the garden. Understand that. You can, you can eat of the fruit because God knows that if he wants you to eat of that fruit, you'll be like one of him to know what's good and evil. You can be a God. So this is the first temptation, all right? This is original. So our position. So where we were before, Genesis shows us the origin. Man, I moved that way too far over. I hope, I hope it doesn't go off the page. Anyways, <laughs> I swear, someday I'm going to get this fine-tuned, people. I'm going to actually get this fine-tuned. <laughs> then the Lord is going to come. Fantastic. Importance of creation review. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about these right now. Uh, so we understand um, in Genesis we find all our doctrines. Understand this. In Genesis we find our doctrine of sin, the fall, redemption, justification, the promise of the coming Messiah, we find Jesus Christ is mentioned as the seed of her. Her seed will crush or his uh, will bruise his heel. Her seed. And when we talk about a woman doesn't have a seed, it's, he's talking about the coming Messiah. And this is uh, on, the, um, on the curses that God throws on the serpent, man, and woman. So from the very gate, we could find all the personality and personhood of God and the kingdom of God. And the origins of Genesis shows us the universe, the order, the complexity, the solar system, the atmosphere, and uh, hydrosphere, it, life, man, marriage, good and evil, language, government, culture, uh, nations. And I want us to understand that this is important to us because it is uh, that people have abandoned the truth of Genesis. They've taken, there's some Bibles out there that doesn't even have Old Testament in it anymore. It doesn't have the Old Testament. The Passion Bible it doesn't have the Old Testament anymore. And all they teach is, all they teach is Proverbs, um, Psalms, and, and New Testament. So we, we forget the origin of God. We forget the origin of where the book comes from. We forget the origin. We abandon that. And we understand that that's where there's so much confusion in, in everything. What's up, brother? That's dangerous. Where are all these prophets, prophecies Jesus is talking about? Where is it from? Or how he says, as it, as it is written, you know, it, blah, 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 what's it written from if you don't understand where it's written from out of the uh, Old Testament. Mm, and there we are. 
Well, they're dropping them. They're not, I know, don't, do not change a, j a jot or a tittle. Do not add or subtract from it. From Deuteronomy to uh, Revelation, it talks about do not add or subtract from this. And, but it comes down to the fact that, well, we put ourselves on a throne, haven't we? We, we know better. So it is that society is in such confusion is that we've abandoned the origins of Genesis. I mean, we do not practice. We don't. I, I love that I, keep, I heard Gage talk about uh, how uh, Walt Russell has blown him away and gave him passion to get into the Old Testament. And Walt Russell is a hermeneutics uh, and veritas. And so just to have that passion to understand where all of it stems from, when you start seeing in the scripture that uh, Christ talks about and you start understanding where, um, how Christ interweaves in the Old Testament. Anyways, gender, marriage, all these things come from uh, Genesis, from the Old Testament. Yes. Walt, Walt Russell is on YouTube. Yes, it is. And it will pop up. It will pop up. And uh, then it, what's the other one? Walter Martin. That's another one. He's he's. Yes, he is. He he. What you did twelve? There's like fifty of them. Or forty-five, something like that. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Walt Russell and uh, and Walter Martin. Yeah. So importance of creation. Though God is Lord God above all the earth, through His, uh, though He is not contained within His creation, He upholds works and is near His people. This is important of creation, that he is, he is actively, purposefully involved in his creation. He created, he just didn't create it and let it spin out of control. Some theologies believe that, as that he just created it and he put his hands off and let us just find out who we were. <laughs> God created all things with a finished purpose, with an end goal in mind. And that's very important to understand, that everything he, he throws out there, whatever he's created, it's got purpose, people. It's, it's not for just, for, uh, hold on real quick. Where did it go? There it is. It's not just for, uh, um, it's for his glory, and it's not just for us to suffer through everything. It's, there's a purpose for whatever you go through, whatever you're going through. You raising your hand or you just covering your hair? Uh, okay. So we're going to cover today in his likeness, what that means, his image or likeness. Uh, we're going to talk about kingdom mandate, what our role is as uh, what he's laid out our role to be. We're at a federal headship. Um, I've, I've made a little slide tonight called imputed confusion, and it'll come back up in a second. That's most annoying. Ah, look, at now it corrected itself. <laughs> Being made is our last one. What does that mean prior to our fall, falling nature? Okay. So the question I want you to ask, and we're going we're gonna to dive deeper into this, is who am I, where do I belong, where do I belong, and what am I supposed to do? These are, these are, these are valid questions, and, and, and good doctrine, solid doctrine, and doctrine is just a formalized expression of a foundational belief. It just means gathering um, ideas or gathering scripture on one specific, a specific topic to figure out what it, it means in totality. From Genesis to Revelation, what is our stance with God? So where, where do, who am I, where do I belong, and what am I supposed to do? Acts 17, 25b to 26, since, since you... Yeah, it is. That's just going to drive me crazy. Oh, since he gives, gives to all life, breath, and all things, and he has made... From one blood, every nation of man to dwell on the face of the earth, he has and has determined their predestined, pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. It is complete sovereignty. But within that complete sovereignty, we're going to figure out today. He gives us purpose for, and he gives us the power of free will, and that whatever you put in, you're going to get out. And we, I mean, a lot of us put a, a lot of hell into this world, and we got a lot back. Image, image bearers are accountable to God for uh, he created man in knowledge, righteousness, and holiness. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up scripture tonight that backs that up. But if you guys want to go back on, because if I covered all the and read all the scripture, we're going to be here another month because we're going to skip a couple more days. So his, in his image, in his likeness, you know, what does this mean? And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Genesis 9, 6 says, for in the image of God, 
made he man. Now, in his image or likeness, it, 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 they're actually, they're almost, uh, they're almost uh, sim- similar in their usage. Um, it's, a lot of the scripture talks about uh, as a statue, as a likeness, the outline of a statue. It, it is a, res- a resemblance of who God is. And it, you want to understand that there's a, there's a the slippery slope of understanding that because you've got to understand, we're going to cover later on, that God is spirit. So um, when it, scripture talks about hands, feet, wings, um, out of the breath of his mouth, and all these, you know, he's a lion. Um, he, uh, he's a lion. These are just ways for us to understand um, an infinite God in a, in a human uh, perspective. So how do you understand an infinite God? Well, he makes all the things on the earth as a relationship, relations to us to understand who he is. We understand when he, um, he covers me with his hand. We understand he protects me. He's my shield and my buckler. We understand that he protects me. He's my stronghold. He's the lion. You, you get it? Blank eyes. Blank eyes. Having the image or likeness of God means, in the simplest terms, we were made to resemble God. And what's this mean? Adam did not resemble God in the sense, that, sense of God's having flesh and blood. All right? He did not have flesh and blood. He's, he's spirit. Uh, John 4.24, he, he's God is spirit. So and, and throughout the scripture, he'll, he'll talk it again. But he, he's not made of flesh and bone. Scripture says God is spirit, 4, 424, and does not exist, therefore exists without a body. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. However, Adam's body did mirror the life of God insofar as he created in perfect health and was not subject to death prior to what? The fall. The fall. Prior to our great choice we make every morning to either eat of the tree or not, because we make that every day. So let's continue. Doctor and man, creation to man too. The question is man, I want us to dive in this deeper. What is man? Who is he? These are questions, that, beloved, a- ask yourself. It's a reflection of who we are in his kingdom. All right? You could, you, could, you could be blasé and you could just say that we're created. We're created. Well, what does that mean? How, how, where's your witness if you can't explain that to somebody? And understand tonight that we're going we're gonna to talk about some of those moments that Um, Because original sin, how can God create a world of such evil? Well, God didn't create a world of such evil. You guys understand that, right? It's it's what our choices are and how we're inhumane towards each other. But these are the moments that we have to to understand our position and understand who we are in his kingdom. Where where is he going? Where is man going? And what is the worth of a human? Is there any reliable standard determined to value a man? Psalms 8, 3, and 4, it says, uh, When I consider your heavens, your work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? Proverbs 27, or 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. It is the most amazing thing to me that there's theology. Hey, Justin, how you doing, brother, man? I, I didn't sneak on in, man. <laughs> Sneak on it. Yeah, very good, very good. I gush over this because I, I find myself and in, in, with my past and everything behind me and everything that is lining up in the future, I find myself in that, that moment of adoration that I just don't quite understand. You know, sometimes, I mean, he had perfect communion with uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost before the foundation of the earth. He had everything, just it was perfection that he would create everything, and then he, down to the very smallest detail, he worries about us. What is man that he would consider us? You know, what is man? And it's John 3.16 comes to mind when I say that. Man is important to him. So when we reevaluate the uh, let us make man in our image, it could actually be translated as well, let us make man in our image to be our likeness. And what does that mean? It means that humans are made in the image of God in their moral, spiritual, socially, and mentally. Now, remember what we are, okay? I'm, some people have, I don't know if they're going to appreciate it, but I like the uh, simplistic of it. We're hands, feet. We, we, are, the, we are the mouthpiece. We're the, the hand, right? We are the very uh, 
the instruments that he uses and the more we follow correctly what he says to follow, the better we can be used. And this is where that's this is our this is why you're created. Come to find out this is the meaning of life. This is everything. And he's, he but he is yeah, go ahead, brother. You know, in everything he does, so you will you will reap what fruit you decide to put out there, man. You will reap what what harvest you decide, flesh or spirit. Go ahead, brother. Absolutely. No, that's good, brother, because it has. Oh, how do you get fortified? How, how do you put on Christ? How do you, you know, he's got to add to it as you subtract the things that you were. You must, what's the scripture? Decrease. Uh, John the Baptist said, John the Baptist says, I must decrease, so he must increase. I mean, you can specialize that if you want, it as it is. This is John the Baptist talking about his ministry. It was amazing, and it was, it was booming. And his, his disciples are all mad because this dude, Jesus, that you're talking about, he's taking all our, 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 all our thunder. I go, no, this is what I've, I've, I've been living for. He goes, I, I must increase so he can increase. I do. Let loose who we were, the more we can add, he can add to. We're going to cover the spiritual part at the end of today. That's going to be my sum up. But we're going to talk about socially, we're going to mentally, and morally right now, because I want us to understand that these are, again, this just to show you again that he is using you, like Ruthie said, and I'm going to say it over and over again, that you guys are the closest thing that some, some people will get to a Bible. All right? You are some, some people out there will never open a Bible, and by your actions and the way you carry yourself, this might be the closest somebody ever gets to that and might bring somebody in. I mean, I, I've, I'm, a, I'm not gushing, I'm not snapping my suspenders and saying, looking at me. But a lot of people around here tell Troy that, you know, Gage is another reason. And me and this congregation, they, they feel the love out in this, this, this area. They understand that because we're actually doing this biblically. You know, they, that's what we need to do. So socially, humanity was created for fellowship. I want to read this real quick, and I think I... I I think I took it from one of Seaford's old when it talked about gender and marriage, but it, it, it's, it fits right now because I want us to understand what, understand what it means that we are, we're going to cover it someday when we get to the doctrine of sin because I want us to understand what the corruption of this perfection has had upon us. But inherently, we, we desire holiness. Inherently, we desire completion. It is written, uh, it, it is in the complementary relationship that we get a, a glimpse of the Imago Dei, and that is the image of God. It is in, when we feel the body of Christ, and we, know, uh, we understand that it is a beautiful thing, we understand we're walking it correctly, it's when that spirit works through that the best. That's the completion that, he's, that we're so desperately always bending knee to whatever it was. I bent knee to drugs, you know, and the... The gambit of all of that, dude. The drama of the drugs and all that. But anyway, so humanity was created for fellowship. This reflects God's triune nature, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and His love. In Eden, man's primary relationship was with God. It implies fellowship with God. And God made the first woman because it is not good for man to be alone. I met a, I met a Christian in, in uh, the, the mission that he didn't like the way we were speaking about his church, and it was a, I won't bring it up, but anyways, and um, it's a popular church, and, and uh, Seaford made some comments about it, and he didn't like it, and so he decided he could be a lone Christian, that he can be by himself, and he, he made some obscure reference to an Old Testament, I don't remember who it was, but everybody kept telling him that it, it's impossible, you, you can't, 
you can't do this by yourself. All right, you can't be out in the world trying to uh, lone ranger it. We we are built for communion. We are built for the body of Christ. We are built to be interconnecting. I mean, just think about the when it talks about the scripture where it talks, uh, how can the ear say to the to the eye? You know, we we are made to be one, and that's the completion of uh, of the body of Christ, a good working body of Christ. Every time someone marries, makes a friend hugs a child or attend, attends church, he or she is demonstrating the fact that we are made in the likeness of God for fellowship, to be social, understand, understand that we, this is what we, we are built for. And, I mean, you can't sit around the house. I, I, can, name, I, can, name, I can name a few that uh, think that that's okay and their theology is askew. Mentally, humanity was created as a rational, free-willed, agent. I want to emphasize that because I've talked about the theologies out there that say that we don't have a free choice. In the grand scheme of things, if God knows the beginning of the end, we truly don't have free will. He just, he's a, a puppet master pulling the strings. But I, it's, that falls so short, becomes, scripture becomes so disingenuous, and scripture continuously tells us we have free will. We have free will over and over again. In other words, human beings are reason, uh, can reason and choose. This reflects God's intelligence and freedom. It, it, it reflects his goodness and sovereignty to give us an opportunity to choose him or not. All right? Choose, he, he talked to the Israelites. Today, make a choice. Death or life. Cursing, curses or blessings. Now, if they had no choice, that's disingenuous. Now, if... if the Israelites were locked. I'm just going to go off this again because I preached on this a while back. If Israelites were locked, then we have a lot of Baal, Baal uh, worshipers, idol worshipers up in heaven. If every single one of them was saved from the gate, and that's not the way it is. That's not how he works. Anyways, so his intelligence and freedom, I think that it's more sovereignty. And then I know it's more sovereignty. And then him giving us an opportunity to come to faith, him giving us an opportunity and a choice. He, he draws us to him. And then gives us that, uh, that freedom or that election to the truth. That we are allowed to be, we can either choose it or walk from it. Anytime someone invents a machine, writes a book, paints a landscape, enjoys a symphony, calculates a sum, or names a pet, he or she is proclaiming the fact that we are made in God's image. Socially, okay, understand whatever, it, this, is, this is reasoning. Do. This is how. This is the freedom Christ, God gives us, and I want to say this: it makes Him even more amazing that in this world that He knows, and I you can get deep in theology. I still have a hard time with the counter counterfactuals, where He knows the actual and the possible. That one just really fizz, just burns my noodle. So I'm not, but it really burns my noodle because I can't I can't grasp that one, and it, I'm sure that. Uh, Anyways, my point is this, is that he does know what we are going to do and what we aren't going to do. But in that is sovereignty is his, his, uh, and his strength to give us the free will to choose. Go ahead, brother. Uh, Frank Turk, with the, the certain way. Frank Turk, uh, like yeah. I showed me this, or uh, maybe uh, I showed you, or someone showed it to me. Maybe that makes it easy. Probably. One of those quick little TikTok things? You know, uh, oh. there's a TikTok, like an hour and a half TikTok. Okay. Because Oh, the football. Yeah. Yeah. He said, yeah. He said that if you say you have a husband and wife, yeah. and she has a time machine, yeah. so she can go forward and what if she find out that her husband brings home a pizza tomorrow? Just because she knows that he brought, was going to bring home a pizza doesn't mean that she caused him to bring home a pizza. Yeah. Nice. No, that's good. That's pretty good. Just because husband and wife, she has a time machine. She goes in the future to see that he has, he get, he's going to bring home a pizza the next night. Yeah, but she doesn't cause him to bring but, home a pizza. But, yeah, just because you go back in time, she doesn't cause him to bring a pizza home the next night. I like that. Yeah. That's good. Brother. Turek. Thank you, brother. That's good, brother. Thank you. So calculate a sum, name the pet. These are proclaiming uh, the fact that we are made in God's image. Morally. Now, this is the... 
this is where I want, to, I want you to understand, because this is where it's death. I mean, mentally, we, I mean, morally, we've got to come at it. Because it's, it's a hard, I preached last weekend, man. Truth takes effort. It takes work, and it takes discipline. It, it takes it, man. It, and it, it could take a toll if you're trying to walk that line. I've seen a lot of pastors walk that line, and then they get pulled into the world. All right? I've, I remember hearing a pastor that walked the line that he uh, had a por- problem with pornography. So what did he do when he became the pastor? He went to strip joints and uh, tried to walk that line. And eventually it pulled him back in. All right. And when it comes down to it, it's just it's morally we have to make sure we, we, we are set apart. We have to make sure that we are we are um, what he asks us to be. He's our moral compass. Humanity was created in righteousness and perfect innocence, a reflection of God's holiness. That's what we were created on. <laughs> we are not there. We'll talk about what that means when, uh, what I mean by that when we, we go to the doctrine of sin. Because it comes down to the fact that that's what we were perfect innocence till we were made to um, tend to his garden. We were made for perfect communion with him. This is what we were made for. But it wasn't, it was, it was robotic. True love only comes with a choice. True love only comes with a choice. Understand that. There, there's no free will in true love or in love. Then it's, it's not true love. And that's what he's, he gives us to. He saw all he had made, including man, man included, and called it very good. Genesis 131. Our conscious or moral compass is only a mark of our original state. Whenever someone writes a law, recoils from evil, praises good behavior, and, or feels guilty, he or she is confirming the fact that we are made in God's own image. Right. Amen? It, yeah. And see, understand this. It, I, I, talk, I touched a, bit, a little bit about this week, and love is love. And I want you to understand where, why that is such a uh, true. And if you want to get biblical about it, storge. Storge is that affectionate love. Everybody has that from the gate. So, yeah, love is love, technically, but that is not a love to build on. That's a love, if it's not surrendered to a higher power, becomes naturally angry at somebody. But that's the natural affection that we showed. But it, huh, it's conditional. Oh, yeah, it's conditional. Oh, yeah, absolutely, it's conditional. So I love it. it when we feel guilty, praises good behavior, and recoils from evil. I remember, <laughs> I remember going to the mission. And everything started changing. And uh, I, was the, I, was the party, I was the party guy. I could talk anybody into doing any bad thing, right? That was my... That's my ability. And, uh, yeah, serious. Now I talk everybody doing good things. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. But it's just, that's, but um, I remember I was, in the, I was in the program, and there was uh, David. I can't remember his last name. And um, they were all bickering about something. And before I could speak up, everybody's, like, raging. And the, the, their way they were talking was so not God. You know, everybody was in the uh, chapel. It was before in the middle classes, and we were trying to, I think it was a brother that fell away, and we were all trying to pin blame on each other, and I was, I was about to speak up, and David goes, shut up, you stop being so uh, tightwad. <laughs> Anyways, and I've never been ta- called that before. I've never been called that, and it's just funny because I was recalling from the evil that they were speaking. They were backbiting. They were doing all these things that were not a god, and I just thought that was the beginning of me turning that and when I told Troy when we talked on the phone about you know he he had he dropped some cuss words and I asked him to stop the filth mouth but these are the things that we understand we <laughs> start changing huh? potty mouth but we re, we recoil these are these are images or flashes of who we once were but this is the only way to get back there on this side of the cross is who surrender to be saved and let the, be, follow what the Holy Spirit and Jesus uh, laid out Kingdom mandate. This is what our job is. So God created man in, in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the seas. Actually, should have put subdue it. Sorry. Well, that's the same thing. Have dominion over the, the fish of the seas, over the birds of the air, and every living creature thing that moves on the earth this is our this is our federal headship our, this is our kingdom mandate under the federal headship of adam 
man is created as king and son to fill, rule, and subdue, excuse me, the earth for God's glory. This is the argument, okay? How can, I, I've heard this several times. How is it fair that Adam sinned and we're all sinners because Adam sinned? How is that fair? How is that fair? Now, Scripture backs it up, and, with, and we're going to cover it in a second, but understand what heter- federal headship is. Federal headship is this. refers to someone in charge of a people group. Adam was created as representation in, car- in charge of man. What's an example of that? Our government, the president. That's, that's, that's our representative. Whatever he decides, we all feel. Okay, um, head of the household, man or woman, whatever. Whatever he or she decides, the rest of the house feels. That's, that's an example of federal headship. So because of that, Scripture says like this. Romans 5, 18 says, As one trespass led to condemnation for all man, so one act of righteousness led to justification and life for all men. And this is imputed righteousness. And Lorna asked this before, and just like uh, Brian said, it is a transaction. It is a giving take. It's giving something and taking something. So to designate any, any action, word, or thing as credited to another person's account, he took our sin, nailed it to the cross, and he gave us his righteousness. And that's imputed. It's a transfer of funds. All right, that's what it means to be, uh, that's what it means to be federal headship and what Christ did when he brought sin out of the world and to bridge that gap again. Romans 5.19, for as one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So also one man's obedience, many were made righteous. Okay, so this is the impunity, all right? This is the transfer of, uh, <laughs> and we all, uh, I, I, again, the most amazing thing, because we don't deserve it. Seriously, he goes to the cross for what? To, so you can perf- believe in your heart or profess with your, uh, your, with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him for the dead so you can be saved. That's love. That's amazing to me. Created, man is created as king and son to fill, rule, and subdue the earth. This is, this is uh, subdue the earth for God's glory. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Understand what that means. We are created to be in three relationships, God, other people, and creation. This is our constant. This is our burden, people. All right? You cannot be separate from everything. All right? You might be separated, set apart, but you're still part of. All right? But we are set apart because of him, because of his holiness. But we are, we are made in relationship to be stu- good stewards. I make fun of recycling, but it comes down because I think the Lord is going to come before we get <laughs> any real bad effects on the climate, but it comes down to the fact that uh, God asks us to be good stewards of what he's given us to in everything we do, everything we do. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether you eat, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Everything we do and everything we think, this is what he's created us to do. What's the chief end of man? I'm, I want you, you're going to need to know this one because this is one that's probably going to be back on Veritas. Chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's the chief end of man. That's when it comes down to it. That's the nitty gritty. That's everything. I mean, he has created us for his glory. But at the same time, like you said, he, when he adds to us, it helps others. We become that conduit, that, that flowing river. If as long as we don't block it or dam it up with ourselves. And when it comes down to it, that's, brings glory to him, and that's where our enjoyment comes from. It is a beautiful thing. Come on, man. Amen? Amen. Imputed confusion. Okay, so I read this thing that it, it, this is where our confusion comes from, and we're going to talk more about this in, in our um, 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 the doctrine of, uh, of sin. But understand, what, remember what impunitive. It is a transaction. It is he takes, and well, he takes, and he he gives. This is what he does. We give him our sin. He gives us his righteousness. We have nothing to do with it. This is what he does. But the confusion lies here. This is where it lies when it comes to our role as fallen creatures when it comes to God. Man is both part of nature and an entity who stands on the side of God in nature. We have endowed with both 
kingship and sonship. Here is the tension between the fit, finiteness and freedom, between the t twin responsibilities of obedience and authority, between humility and the power of stewardship. The tension is here where the original sin comes from, that we are both given. I was, I was talking with Jessica, and I was talking about uh, what, I, what I see my role is and what I saw my role is as, as uh, a Christ follower. Did you know most nights back in the day, um, most of the kingdoms were built on, on Scripture. It was built on some kind of idea that there's a hierarchy, and the king and the knight would follow the king, God and country, God and country, God, king, and country. That's what it is. And so he would he, he most dedicated to the cause or the charge that God sent him out to do, or what this king sent him out to do. And it is most, it is, it's funny that kingship and sonship, at the same time we are to follow him, we're supposed to obey him, all right? And that's where we get this, again, big G, little G's. That's where all this stems from. We stop thinking that we, we start thinking that we are in charge and we're not. Creator, creature. And that's, there's no in between. Being made, what does it mean? Part of being made in God's image is that Adam had the capacity to make free choices. He, he, God gave him a choice. He gave him a choice. What was the choice? Well, don't do what your wife just did. <laughs> don't take of the apple. Everything you can eat, but this, this tree. Well, then all this would just be for naught. He knew what we'd do. He knew what we would do. I mean, he goes, oh, it's stumped. Oh, I'm going to have to start over again. <laughs> oh, they, they didn't eat of the fruit. Nope, let's, let's, yeah, cut and paste. Let's do it again. Satan just didn't come forward. Yeah, just like, God, everybody's so good. <laughs> Although we were, we were given... A righteous nature, Adam and Eve made an evil choice to rebel against his, their creator. It was a, uh, yeah. See, that's, that's a good, that's a theological, uh, yeah, the, the question is, was it wasn't evil that they didn't know it was evil? There was one command, they did. They understood it. Because what happened once they had that command, what happened? They were, they hid, they hid. Shame, but they knew it was wrong because they didn't have any other commands given to them. That was the command. As soon as you eat it, God said, "What? You will surely, surely die. You surely die." And he, he told them from the gate what would happen. So it was the choice we make. We make this. Uh, remember this, guys. I, we can spiritualize. I want to. I just want to take a spiritual principle real quick. We make this choice every day when we wake up and throughout the day. This is the choice we make every day, every second. We make it. In doing so, they marred the image of God within themselves and passed that damage likeness onto their descendants. Romans 5.12, therefore, just as one man, one man's sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus sin spread to all men because all sinned. It's our nature, but blessed be to our Lord Jesus Christ. That brings us out, and we're no longer sins to sin, or slaves to sin. And that's where the beauty of it all comes from. Today, we, are still, uh, we still bear the image of God, but we also bear the scars of sin. And this is, the, this, this is it, the, sin, the kingship and the sonship. And we, we, we'd say love is love, but we define that with a corrupt heart. We, we define that with a corrupt uh, nature. We, we think we understand what love is, and we take the originator of love out of the equation, and we put the, uh, the definition there, now, and we say what love is. No, 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 no. He says it. He says what love is, and that's what love is, period. There's no ifs, ands, buts. There's no ups or downs, lefts or rights, uh, highs or lows. That's what love is. But we still bear this, uh, the scars. James 3.9 says, with it, with it we... Bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. This is what we do, people, all right? We got to understand that our position in this world is to be light bearers, all right? And that sometimes our light becomes dark. We got to understand that we walk in, the, in, in a manner worthy of our calling. You know, we help them out the most. We help others out the most. 
morally or mentally, morally, socially, spiritually, and physically, um, we show the effects of sin. Romans uh, 8, 21, 22, because, of, because the creation itself also will, will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors for, with birth pains uh, together until now. And understand even the earth that we walk on, the, the, the soil we toil over is, the, is in, an example of the fall. And we'll get into that too, because the curses of uh, if you hear chapter three, I believe, of uh, Genesis talks about uh, what what curses are on the earth. In the garden, Adam and Eve knew their Lord, were morally blameless, and could serve before Him in love. By sinning against God, the knowledge which once pulsed with love became poisoned by fear, and the righteousness and holiness was sullied. The once we praised and worshipped and wa- walked in the coolness of the morning with God and communicated and communed with Him. And then once we decided to eat of the fruit, it's sullied. And every day we have to struggle to keep that perspective in our mind. Every day, every minute, got to. Yet your obligation as creatures before God remained. All right, you're, you're socially, spiritually, mentally, morally, Bound to God to follow what he says. Okay? Do not eat of the tree. Human beings, male and female, have the capacity for relationships that reflect the character of our creator. We went through <laughs> hours on end about the attributes of God. All right? I even learned how to say attributes instead of attributes. So I just want you to know that that was a big growth mark with me. <laughs> because I said it for so long and funny, Tom and... Or Chappie and Pastor Seaford got on my, uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, the attributes. Understand that we are reflections of God, okay? And our moral, the way we carry ourselves reflects. And we'll cover that spiritually at, at the end of this. Humans are, crown, are the crown jewel of God's creation. And we serve a glorious purpose within the creation. Understand that animals are not people. And don't get all puffy-eyed, all right? Animals are not people. Okay, I do believe that scripture talks about he made a covenant with every animal as they came off two by two. I do believe he made a covenant with them. So in my mind's eye, there's scripture actually talks about them having a spirit or soul. And it's the same word that they use for man's soul at one point in time. So he made a covenant with them. All dogs go to heaven. I might be wrong, but I'm just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay on that one. Okay, so if I'm wrong, seminaries, correct me. Huh? No, no, I, no, I didn't. No, that was somebody else. You're talking about the wrong man. You're talking about the wrong man. It was not me. It was somebody else. It was somebody else. If Christ was coming back on a white horse. Oh, Peggy. Woo. Yeah, nice. If, if Christ is coming back on a white horse. Ah. Huh? Well, there we go. Well, I don't know if that's eisegesis or exegetical, but we're going to go with exegetical. I like that. I like that. It made me feel good, so we're going to go with it. <laughs> and that's what matters. <laughs> All right, for his, uh, serve a glorious purpose within his creation. Colossians 1.15. Uh, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of over all creation. 1 Timothy 6.16, who alone has immor- immortality dwelling in in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen, excuse me, or who can see, to whom be honored in everlasting power. Amen. Who? Yeah. God. Spiritually. I want to cover this one because this one is important for us because I want you to understand what your role is. We, we covered this when we went through the attributes of God. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Now, why is, why is that an important scripture? Okay, the, the reason why that's an important scripture is because Jesus is saying, reflect the things I've done to those around you, to your brothers. He's saying the things I've done, love now your brothers as I have loved you. Why? If we as, as his children love one another, walk according to his commands, God is made visible within each other. You are visually representing the Lord. 
Okay, understand that. That your actions, the way you speak spiritually, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, it's a, it's a beautiful burden. It, it truly is. It truly is. It gets, and like I've said this before, watch what happens if you get silly with it. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Get stupid with it. I mean, serious. Lay it all aside and just lay it to Christ. Put your pride aside. Put everything aside and go, God, I don't know how to do that, but help me. Dare you. Dare you. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Ha, huh. yeah. Watch what happens. You will fall in love. Man, oh, what is man? Who is he? Where did he come from? Where is he going? What is the worth of, man, uh, of human? Is there any reliable standard to determine the value of a man? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Understand at the end of it all, Christ, we were given a choice. He made everything for what? Yeah, you can look, you look at it. You, make, you can be foo-foo about it. Um, a lot of uh, scripture says that he's perfectly sound. He does not need us. He's, uh, he's, self, he's um, um, a satiety. He's, he's just self-reliant. He doesn't need his creation. All right, We're made to, to glorify him and to serve him and serve others. And within that is love, joy, faith, um, just everything that he promises you. And that's what our creation is. That's what we're made to be, to, to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And everything else from that stems joy, love, peace, everything he says. Problems, questions? I love this. Oh, maybe. Anyone else? <laughs> Anybody? Justin, you got a question? All right. Well, we can close up with a prayer. Okay, go ahead, man. Yeah, and well, it, and it's not your money anyways. It, it comes down to the fact that you're you're not you're on his turf, you're in God's world, all right. And the things that he's given you is to help and extend that hand to others. What you have is his. We give back to him, like Solomon. I understand that one, sis, but understand this. Um, what God asks us to do, he asks us not just to have compassion on somebody, because we can have compassion and don't have to show mercy. We don't have to show mercy. Oh, I pray for you. You know, uh, bless your heart. See you later. Walk away. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have to show them mercy. All right. But it comes down to the fact, I remember having, you, you said, Determine on what they're going to use it for. All right. I, I, I love when I, was, when I was a drinker, a guy, that, a homeless dude, would hold up a sign saying, um, I don't need anything but a beer. And I'd be like, okay, that's just honest, man. So I'm a drinker here. I understand that honesty. So I give it to him. These days, um, so I had this, this problem when I was at the mission. Um, get very little money, dot, dot, dot. There's ones that I can't come in the mission anymore because mental instabilities, whatever, they popped off. They can't come back anymore. So I see them on the street, and I got a couple bucks, and they're asking me. And um, I know what they're going to use it for. I know what they're going to use it for. Well, maybe they won't. A lot of people give food. But it comes down to the fact that God asks us to um, help the oppressed, to give to those that uh, are downtrodden and forgotten. And what we need to do is, as that mindset, whatever they decide to do, we pray that they don't. And pray that they, they use it for, yeah. Huh? If that's where your heart is. Yeah, if I don't have food on me, I, I, I have gone in and give, I have bought um, 
um, chicken or hot dogs for Chris, um, our guest here that comes here time to time. And I have done it for Frankie. I've gone in and bought food, and, you know, because I'm going in there to buy food anyway. So, why not, you know, instead of getting some money. But, um, and I'll ask them, are you hungry? Are you just, you know, and they'll usually, yeah, yeah, I'm hungry. And so, okay, cool. Because most of the time you see them doing what? Digging in the trash. So you know that they're not looking for a dollar. They're looking for food. So that's when you go, okay, food is good. Now, if I don't have, if I'm not going in the store, well, if I have two bucks, there, there's two bucks. And it's not going to get you anything these days. Oh, my God, it's not going to get you anything these days. Amen. And you blessed and you've done what God has asked you to do. What's, what's up, Troy? And it comes down to this, still, 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 whatever you do, whatever they do with it. it it's, it's them. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's pre, pre-warning, but what about the one you don't know on the street? Yeah, you know, what about the one that you don't understand who they are? Or they're just coming around here for the first time, all right? And that, that's the one. Now, the ones I know that are kicked out of the stores, because I know a lot of them are, aren't allowed at uh, Shell Station. Ma- majority of uh, our guests that come here, um, I don't want to say majority. Yeah, a lot of them aren't allowed at Shell Station anymore. Really? Oh, gosh. Yeah, Ray's or ShopSmart either. Yeah, and uh, I mean, and it comes down to the fact that, okay, well, well, we are sometimes the only food that they get during the week that's easy to get, that, that's easy to get. And I can understand, I mean, Scripture even talks about being uh, uh, stealing when you're hungry, but you're going to pay back seven times. And it, it talks about it. So let's pray real quick, and then if you guys want to talk, we'll continue on. Father, we just, uh, we thank you for this day, Lord. And um, I, I just, personally, Father, I, I come to you with just uh, amazement and marvel, Lord, just. I find myself at a loss for words. Um, is it function, Father? Is it is it structure? Is it equality, Lord? It ha- what have you what have you made us for? To enjoy you? I mean, a family, Father. I just I, I thank you, Lord, that you called us brothers and sisters and mothers, Father. I, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have you have done what you've done, Father. It just and in in the grand schemes of the eternal uh, uh, plan. For, I just, I pray that I honor you with my walk. Socially be uh, aware, morally be a, uh, a beacon, Lord, and uh, physically, spiritually, Lord, you be, be what you have asked me to be. Um, mentally is out the window. Um, I thank you for this day, Father. I thank you for this dedicated small group. Lord, I ask for blessings on their heart, Lord. Let them understand and walk out of here with a clearer understand what, understanding of who you are. And their roles, Lord, creator, creature. Help us understand, Lord, that we speak with reverence, adoration, and respect, Lord, when we come uh, to your throne room. We thank you for being our friend. We thank you for being our mother, our care. Lord, we thank you for your compassion, Lord. We thank you that you are our all in all. And we ask for your uh, spiritual guidance and your uh, to be sensitive to your moving Holy Spirit. We lift these prayers up in the name of Jesus. Amen.